Alright, so I played a game recently called Beautiful Desolation, from the Super Stasis Bros, come another isometric, story-heavy game. And I feel so much better about recommending it. There's still a melancholic feel to the entire thing, but god damn, at least it's not constant brutality, depression and horror beyond imagination. Creative, unique and strangely nostalgic, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Even if I do believe that the game suffers from some very annoying problems. Anyway, yeah, I recommend it. Good game. What is it about? South Africa, 20th century. A peaceful drive to get together with a lone lost brother ends with a sudden tragedy. Everything seemingly gets swept off the ground as this mysterious monolith appears in the sky. In the years that come, the technology advances past everyone's dreams. Yet there is still something sinister lurking behind it. Mark sets to unveil the secrets with his brother, but somehow appears somewhere else entirely. Now, in the future, the world is ravaged by the past wars, calamities and decadence. The few survivors are left behind in a haunting, but beautiful desolation. What did I enjoy? The world. One can always imagine the typical trip to the future. Deserts, radioactive wastes, crazy survivors, mutants, whatever else that like that. Basically fallout. It feels like this sort of setting is barren for creativity. Yet here it's different. There are still deserts, ruins and strange people, but all of it is done from a different perspective. The entire thing feels almost like a merge between Stone Age and sci-fi. Side by side there are tribes barely surviving and tilling a tiny patch of land while living in mud huts. While they are led by a robot, use grenade launchers and there are force fields everywhere. There's also the typical stuff from the Bischoff's... Bischoff's brothers? Bish <laughs> they have a weird name. So there are exposed skulls, gore, merge of technology and flesh. Also personally found the idea behind the nest and moss fascinating. So spoilers, but I don't think it really matters. There's an experiment about making a supercomputer out of nanites, while the data would be stored in genetically modified mushrooms. How insane is that? Only apparently the nanite swarm decides to get greedy and has a disagreement with itself and splitting in two, while the shrooms gain sentience and just want to chill in their cave. Or inflict bloody vengeance on the nanites because of the horrible suffering this whole experiment inflicts. It's absolutely on point for their writing. I wish we'd simply explore more things and not just horror. I still feel a gnawing feeling at the back of my mind, thinking of the events of stasis. Ahem. Aside from that, there really isn't much, now that I think about it. The characters are fairly flat. Pooch is probably the, only, the most interesting one, I mean. A machine which got tired of being experimented upon and pretended to be faulty. In the game she is often... I suppose the word would be whiny, but I don't know if how to say that in a not negative way. Because I did like her. She was the voice of reason, I suppose. Mark was bland and for whatever reason there were frequently options to be rude for no reason. I avoided those because it's hard to be mean to fake people. While Don was a bit of a waste, honestly. He didn't do much of anything, and then he did chime in on the decisions he twice agreed with a clearly abusive side. Also, I kept hoping he'd do something, but essentially he was... there. None of the game would happen without him, of course, but then there was interesting background, background history, but he just contributed very little to the plot of the gameplay. I suppose he did do that battle thing, but I didn't actually play much of it. Just tried it and didn't like the interface. Optionally, annoying content didn't redeem him in my eyes. For the other characters, I liked Anna Taylor, but I didn't get to talk to her more than once. Chiz and Yama were pretty cool, liked her story and what they do. Caesar was also nice, I did not expect that background. It's kind of hard to talk about these without spoiling stuff. It actually matters a lot more for the characters. Anyway, I don't think I disliked anyone in particular, but felt like vast majority of the characters were underutilized. People mentioned that and a handful of others get enough of a, enough of a spotlight, like Lebanon, Kush, Brabones, Jarek, the train guy, I can't actually remember the name of the train, just remember him mentioning Tulip every other sentence. But the rest, it felt like they needed more background, more chatter, more anything. Especially Grave. He appears fairly early and seems like the only source for Red Mercury, yet he isn't and his challenge isn't even possible to complete until nearly halfway through the game. Meanwhile, after talking once, he doesn't talk again or do anything. I, I wanted to see something, I don't know. It felt like he was hyped up for a while, only to end up completely irrelevant and optional. I totally forgot, Jerry and Jeff dialogue was very amusing. I wish to see those again, but minor, so hey. 
So I guess I mixed positives with the negatives, but it was meant to be something in the middle. What did I dislike? The actual gameplay. Which isn't meant to say that I hate walking around talking to people, that's actually something I actively look forward in boss games. No. Instead, I mean that the puzzles, the order of events and how the game was paced are problematic. I was frequently co confused by what is the next step exactly, only to walk around for half an hour and discover what some NPC is available to talk to again, without any indication that something has actually changed. Meanwhile, there are moments like entering Mongrel base which seem to have one solution yet rely on something a lot more basic and boring. I'll just spoil it, they ask to bring a love live flay which are mind control parasite worms. One of the characters is dying and I assumed his worm would be taken and then reanimated through a certain device picked up fairly early on. No, just gotta find the worm in the flay base, although still gotta use that device. Then there is the agnate base, Marcus barred entry. I assumed Pooch just could walk in there since, you know, agnate dog, but nope, completely different solution. Then there is the discovery of locations. Talk to someone after a certain trigger and it just appears on the map. I'd love it if it was possible to actually find things instead. Sure, some can be hidden, but it feels lazy and pointless to even have the overall screen otherwise. And the biggest problem I've encountered was the what I assume are the bugs. So I have mentioned Moss and, Moss and Nest. Those two want to eradicate the other. However, there exists a third option as I have learned by searching the internet for Anna Taylor and the beautiful desolation. I kept flying to her over and over after everything I did in that location, hoping that she'd have some sort of new dialogue, especially because of her last line. I finally got a device that would end that chapter, but she still had no new dialogue. So I finally ended it and she was gone, no longer appears on the map. First of all, rip off, horribly upsetting. Second of all, why the hell didn't more dialogue trigger? And this happened before too. There are drones floating in the cattle. Creepy side, but talking to them once didn't yield anything. Apparently there is another drone in Hanasi, who for whatever reason didn't have dialogue at one point, but will at another. Why or what triggers it, I didn't figure out, and just randomly bumped into him while trying the usual moon logic of trying X on Y over and over. By the way, the game does kind of play like a point and click. Just try everything over and over and eventually you get a solution. So I'm assuming other people would run into this exact problem. Possibly at other moments, possibly the same, but the gist is what the game isn't fully linear, but it doesn't feel fully open either. Which means that a lot of things break for no reason and everything feels restrictive while not having an obvious direction. And like I said, it feels like there should be multiple solutions to problems, yet there is always just one. Overall, I feel almost like this game would have benefited from being a movie or a TV series instead of an actual game. Or, hell, getting someone else involved. Bishops can make up great worlds, backgrounds, plot, but something about the way they do the actual game design that never seems to work very well. I'm still curious to see more from them, but I do hope we change some things. Beautiful Desolation is definitely a step in an interesting direction.